I have had experiences with low vibratory beings. It's part of that understanding energy university. It was so open in the beginning when I was telling you I had those beings by my bed. They would come in and, and then leave. So I would actually feel them and it's scary as heck, but they weren't able to stay within me because my frequency was high. So I wasn't a match for them. Biggest, 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 biggest lesson they want everyone to learn is how to raise their frequency. All right, welcome to the New Age Human Podcast. I'm your host, John Astacio. In today's episode, we're diving into the world of trance channeling with our guest, Pamela Downs. She's the founder of the community Spirit Calling. We'll explore Pamela's personal journey into this unique realm, which includes discussing her encounters with various entities, including both positive and and negative. It gets pretty interesting and I start asking her some questions about that. Now, before we begin, if you want to support the show, what I'm looking for is some feedback from you guys. I want to hear from you. You can send me an email or leave a voice message. All you got to do is go to newagehuman.com and on the top right, you'll see the contact me button and on the bottom right, you'll see a mic to leave a voice message. Would be really cool to hear you. Now, with that said, thank you for joining me today. Let's get to the show. Sweet. All right. Pamela Downs, thank you for coming on to the show. How's it going? It is going well. I'm so happy to be here today and finally get to talk with you. Yeah, man. We're going to be talking about channeling. We're going to be talking about beings, visions, a global community. But I want to go into the beginning, the origin story. <laughs> what, Where were you and what happened that made you do what you're doing now. Yeah, back to the very beginning. Not that, not quite that far, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I was telling someone recently, like what I'm doing now, the work that I'm doing now, who I am as a human being showing up now is not something that I had on my radar, you know, even 10 years ago, even 12 years ago, even five years ago. Um, right now I've stepped into like, I think I call the, a new chapter of my life where I'm really immersed in spirituality and in, in leading a spiritual community in um, connecting and channeling messages from angelic beings and um, sort of like a teacher, which I was on the path and I still am. We all are all, always on our spiritual path of, of understanding consciousness and elevating our vibration and learning, our, learning what love truly is to each one of us individually. But um, you know, at the beginning of your spiritual awakening journey, you're just starting to like understand that there's something greater than what you have believed in, what you have perceived, what you have been taught, what you understood, and you want to learn more. And my journey with that, if we go back to where, where that started, was in 2008, around 2008, 2012, um, I was having a challenging, you know, I call my knockdown. I call a lot of times when people have like a, like a psh, swap on the back of the head from God, universe, grace, spirit, whatever you want to call that, um, that divine intelligence that, you know, runs the universe. It was like, psh, you know, we're going to pull a rug from out from under you and you're going <laughs> to deal with it, girl. And we're going to wake you up because you have, you have things to do in 2020 and beyond, you know? Mm -hmm. So, so what happened was um, I have been raised in a religion where many of us are, and you just kind of get born into it and you follow it and you're doing what your parents did and your grandparents did and, and everything is great. And that served me for a certain amount of time until I started having children. And I was like, you know, what do I believe in? Because I was having questions about my religion and my faith and I didn't understand certain things as I was expanding my understanding of love. I was looking at what I had been taught and I'm like, okay, if God is love and I'm supposed to die and be in front of my creator and he's going to say, you did well or you did bad. You're going to heaven or you're going to hell. I'm like, I'm going to burn, you know, for the rest of my life in, in hell. And, and that's not love. That's not love. Like, I don't understand. There was a dynamic um, contrast there for me. And I started saying, well, I believe that God, if God is love, that I have omnipotent life and I am eternal energy. And it just didn't, it just didn't make sense. So I started pulling back and I started pulling back and there were lots of things that were happening in the church that I didn't understand either with the priests and with children. And so I was confused. So my children mm. came onto the planet and it was like, you have to do this and you have to do that. And I was hearing from everyone else 
what I was supposed to do. And I, I did a part, I did a part of that for a while. And then I said, you know what? I, I'm not in alignment with this anymore. I have to pull them because if I don't know what I believe, how can I raise them to believe something that I'm not sure I believe in? And so that was, I think, like one of the one of the beginning moments of breaking away from something that was given to me to believe in <clears throat> into questioning and making changes and having convictions inside of myself. Um, another thing that also happened was my father died. And I watched the you know life force energy leave his body. And you my saw it. I, I, I didn't I didn't like physically see it, but I saw and I wasn't awake, I wasn't who I am right now, but I was starting to say, that's a that's a body in front of me. Where did he go? Where's the essence of my father? Where did his energy go? You know, you're taught you have a soul, but you don't really understand what that is. You know that it's connected to God. You know that it means something greater than what we experience here on earth, but you don't really understand what it is. When you're having your spiritual awakening, you start to learn about your soul body. You start to learn about energy and who we are as spiritual beings having a physical experience on earth. And um, when my dad died, it was like monumentous because I wanted to know where he went. I wanted to know where he went. Where did he go? Right? Where did this guy disappear to? <laughs> where did he go? You know, we put him in the ground, but like he, he went somewhere. And um, I was invited to a spiritual mediumship gallery. And at the time, I was still going through my knockdown. I was, my marriage was um, having problems. We were in the middle of a recession and we lost our home. We lost our retirement. We had a really, really challenging time. It was a huge knockdown. And the spiritual mediumship gallery presented itself to me. Um, and I w was able to receive a free ticket that was paid for. Everything aligned. Like the, there was a babysitter. I didn't have to bother my husband. And I walked into this gallery and I sat right in front and center. I don't know how that happened, but it did. And the, he turned out to be a really good friend of mine um, that helped me through my awakening journey. But at the time, he came right over to me and he said, your father's here. And I was like, I didn't even know this man. And I, I just looked at him with these wide eyes like, what? And he said, I want you to know that he is so sorry for how he showed up as a father. And he wants you to forgive him. And he was an alcoholic and he was physically abusive and verbally emotionally abusive. And I feared him as a kid. And um, wow. he said, he wants you to know that he was a terrible father to you. He never told you that he loved you. And I was an artist and a musician. And he said, he never told you how talented you, you were. And honestly, that was a big one for me because he didn't like, I remember him driving me to a recital that was like, a huge recital. It was my first time in this conservatory. There were all these people that were like, it was scary for me. And he was yelling at me the whole way over because I didn't get the traffic. I didn't get the directions right. And like, he, he just didn't, he didn't understand me and he didn't understand how important that was. And, um, that's how he was. He was not in the moment. He was about himself constantly. And he did, never said he loved me or anything like that. So for me to hear that, it was like a pop, 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 pop moments like a realization of wow there is life he was somewhere right energy yeah. never dies so he was living in a different dimension in a different frequency which i didn't understand then but i do now and i started understanding that i, I read a book called many masters many lives by dr david or brian weiss and it started talking about past lives and i started understanding how energy works and how our souls never die and we come back over and over and over onto planet earth or other places to experience ultimately the greatest lesson that there ever was ever is which is to learn love mm. now people might say oh love all you need is love you know love it's such a such a cliche thing to say but no it isn't it is the greatest and highest frequency of energy it is it is the most beautiful experience when you feel it Everyone wants to be loved. Everyone loves to be in love. Everyone <laughs> loves to feel love, right? Yeah. And um, <clears throat> I started understanding that I had compassion for my father. I started understanding he was a physical being just like me, and he was having experiences. And I started looking at his life. I started looking at his challenges. I started understanding more about my past lives, my past lives with him. 
um, his trial with alcohol, I started having just realizations of compassion and love, and I forgave him. And that must have been hard. It was hard, but when I started having realizations and looking at my life as a mature woman who had children, who also, you know, we were talking, you and I were just catching up before about like rituals and things that we did to celebrate. Like alcohol was always in my family. And I, at the time, you know, was married with a husband and there was alcohol and there was like, I started understanding my father's crutches. Mm. I started understanding what he had to deal with. I started having compassion. Mm -hmm. And then as I, as I just started evolving and opening my consciousness, I forgave him. I was just able to forgive him. When you forgive, you are actually helping yourself because that resentment is held in your energy body. That resentment is holding you down. When you're able to forgive and release that, you're actually elevating your vibration, mm -hmm. which is benefiting you, your soul's journey, your understanding of love. It's the biggest, most beautiful thing that you can do. And from there, everything changed. Everything started shifting. <clears throat> All I wanted to do was learn more. That's so all I wanted to do was learn more and more and more and more <laughs> and more. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. And yeah. It, it sounded like, um, yeah, things started hitting you. Bam, bam, mm -hmm. bam, bam. Mm -hmm. And then um, it, let's say the, uh, the house of cards collapsed and you're looking at these cards and then someone was just like, look at that card, look at that card. And you're looking at the the house that fell apart, understanding Why? what blew it down, what it was made mm -hmm. of, and you're like not frustrated with the pieces and the activity, more so digesting it, understanding it, so that you can learn from it. And mm -hmm. um, it was interesting how you you walked in there, and this guy just was just like I don't know if it was a guy or a girl, but they it just went straight for it was a guy mm -hmm. straight mm -hmm. for you, and then he's just like. I need. I, I can only imagine what's in his mind, right? He's right. like, "Oh, I got to tell her this because she needs to know this stuff." Mm -hmm. And um, just you know, imagine him looking at your face as your reactions. You know, <laughs> you're like, yeah. "Oh my god!" Uh, uh. <laughs> yeah, and he became he became a pivotal part of my spiritual awakening because I had no one. I literally had no one as I started understanding and had questions and wanted to know, and I was listening to like this inner guidance that I was receiving, which we all have, by the way. Mm -hmm. It's your intuition, it's your higher self, it's guidance. You can choose to listen to it or you can choose to ignore it. People, you know, in, in the masses call it my, I had a gut, gut, I got a sense inside of me. I had, I just my gut was saying this or you choose to ignore that and you see the consequences of it. You choose to honor it and you see the benefits of it. And when you start practicing that, you start to choose that more and more and more and more, and your life starts to change. And that's what I was doing. Um, I think that a lot of people can probably relate to that. Yeah. And so, yeah, so as I was doing that, I was having more understandings. I was having more experiences. I started understanding the law of attraction. Mm. So within this whole time, when we lost our house, we had a big house, um, with kids and dogs and things and all the things and all the friends and all the things that, you know, you tend to put importance on the brand things like who doesn't love beautiful things? I do too. But, but when you're, when your your whole reality is skewed and you don't understand that there's something greater than this, you're, you're working within this box all the time of what you think, you know, when you get out of that and you start seeing it benefit you, like I just talked about, you start understanding that you're the creator of your reality. You are the generator and you are the creator of your reality. So what you think, what you speak, what you do, they create more of those things. And I started understanding that. And um, I chose to, I, I found um, Abraham Hicks. I don't know if you know a a Abraham yeah, Hicks. Yeah, familiar. Yeah, a lot of people on their spiritual journey start with them. So maybe your community will know them too. Um, and I started getting clear on Wow. Okay. So what I'm saying has got to change. Right. And I was, people would ask me, how are you doing? I would say, oh my gosh, um, Billy lost his job. And I have my own business it was a marketing company. Marketing is cut. It was the recession. We're all, you know, we're the, like, it was a sad story. I was putting it out, putting it out, putting it out. 
we lost our house. We moved into this little house and I started saying, this little house is my, it's like my, my gift. It's like this, this little present where now, yeah, we're all on top of each other and it's tiny and it's tight (laughs) and it's, you know, like Mm -hmm. you go from a big house to this tiny little house in this community that, you know, everyone's looking at you. There were gossip. People said we're getting divorced. People said all these things, right? But you got to rise above it. And I started calling it my, my little gift house and yeah, it was great. I was closer to school. I could walk my kids to school every day. I could go on walks around my community every day. We were spending more time together. Like I was looking at it with all these new ways of being, with all these new reflections that I could say. And my, I changed my story. I stopped talking about how things were hard. I started talking about, it's amazing. I kept my business through a recession. It's amazing. We're spending more time together, you know, all the, th- all the things. And things started changing things started changing in such a positive way. The universe started giving me gifts, synchronicities, understandings, people, everything that I needed when I need it came in the right time. And you start seeing that. And then you're like, oh, that's how that works. That's how that works. Mm -hmm. It's Mm -hmm. amazing how as you're as you add, as your questions add up, like it actually kind of reminds me of like that toddler that keeps asking why it's the next <laughs> yeah. phase of the whys. Mm-hmm. And um, as you know, it's just the next phase and your awareness starts to grow and you're like, huh, was that irony? Was that by chance? Was that mm-hmm. synchronicity? And you, you know, for me, I call it my weird file. I'm like, I'm just going to mm-hmm. plug it into the weird file mm-hmm. and then I'm going to move forward. And then when I, see something that can answer it i'm gonna open up that file and start start comparing notes yeah this way you don't to- completely discredit it and move on it's like you know it, it, it deserves to be somewhere mm-hmm. um and then you know for, for your story you the the little house the the what i call humble pie right mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and you're like this 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 pie is not that bad <laughs> yeah right this um, pie is not that bad i'm actually very curious where where was the jump? Where was the start of you starting trance channeling? Yeah, it was when I started the healing journey behind that. Mm. So once you start having all these realizations, connecting the dots, like you said, taking things out of your folder and looking at them, right? Connecting those dots. What happens is your awareness changes and then you start to understand energy and then you start to understand you're an energy body and then you start to understand that you have trauma and then you understand that you are a frequency and that you hold a frequency. Everything that's living has a frequency. So you are the frequency of which you hold every experience from every single life, past life, this life, all of them. And you start down this thing called a healing journey which is uh, ultimately gaining back those traumatic experiences and repairing your soul body. So if you think of like, like a clay pot that breaks and it shatters into different pieces, your energetic body, which is your soul body, has fragments that have been taken off of it. Because of those traumatic experiences in your lives, you're gaining them back. You're doing energy work. You're doing Reiki work. You're doing shamanic healing. You're doing meditation. You're doing plant medicine. You're doing... Kashuk record block releasing. You're doing, that's what I did. I just started this path. Spirit would put people in my way. Universe would send me the right person at the right time. And I would say, why is this here? And I was so curious and I wanted to do it. I did it. I did it. Did it for many years. The final piece, and I shouldn't say the final because it's never ending, but the big piece was I was watching, you know, I was on my YouTube. I'm one of just take everything I can and learn everything I can. And I saw this video about ayahuasca Mm. and I was like, I started having knowings and and receiving downloads, having dreams. My dad used to come to me in dreams. Interesting. I would, I would be on a walk and I would hear a turn left instead of my normal turn. Right. And I would turn left and there was a person that I knew I hadn't seen in a while. I'm, I swear had just decided to go for a walk and they were like needing help they needed to talk. They needed, they were like down and out and needed someone. That stuff started happening. And I was like, in okay, a dream or real life? In real life. Oh, wow. And I would be like, it, it's amazing. That stuff still happens. But um, I saw this movie about ayahuasca and I knew I had a knowing that I was going to do that. I hadn't heard about ayahuasca. I didn't know a damn thing about ayahuasca, <laughs> right? Then mm-hmm. I started wanting to know what the heck that was. 
I watched this movie about this guy, Jerry Powell, who was an addict. He was a sex addict, a gambling addict, drug addict, alcohol, everything you could think of. He was a hotel, hotelier in L.A., and he was so addicted, down and out, ready to kill himself. And a friend saw him, told him, challenged him actually, said, I'm going to Peru or wherever to do ayahuasca, and I think that this would benefit you. And he's like, and yeah, I'm not going to do it. She goes, yeah, I didn't think you would or something. And, he, and that sent him on this journey. He went to this place, did ayahuasca, healed himself from all of his addictions. And then he created this place called Rhythmia Life Advancement Center in Costa Rica. I knew I was going there. I kept saying to Spirit, how am I going there? How am I, me, little old me, going to go to another country to do a plant medicine? It's a class one hallucinogenic. By myself? What? <laughs> And the beautiful thing about the universe is you don't need to know why. You don't need to know how. You just need to know. And the rest is taken care of for you. And remember I was saying that people will come in at the right time at the right place. I met this yeah. person who introduced me to this person. And they asked me things to do. And I had to say yes. I had to say yes to them. My spirit, my guidance had to say yes for the next person to come into the path, for the next person to come. And by, a syn by that synchronicity of me saying yes and stepping up and stepping up and stepping up, I got invited to this beautiful little small group of high conscious people who were happening to go to Rhythmia Life Advancement Center. Huh. One, of them, one of the people in the group was a part owner. They were shutting the whole place down. And this special group was going there and I was invited to go. And I, you know, money was tight and there was, there was all kinds of things, but part of your healing journey is stepping up. When the money is tight, you get the opportunity. You don't know how you're going to do it. You have to do it. And I did it through that experience. And it was challenging and it was scary as F and it was, it was so many things, but I did it. I did it. At the end of that, it was four days of doing ayahuasca over and over again. It was a beautiful place. Um, I could talk about that like for a whole other podcast, but um, <laughs> at the end of it, we did a breathing journey. I had really so much past life trauma. I had pulled so many of those pieces back together because of that experience. At the end of it, we did a breath class. This light came through my third eye, filled up my whole body. My teeth were chattering. My, my, my brain, my pineal gland was buzzing and I felt love in its highest frequency. And I heard... Everything from this moment on will change. Your psychic abilities have been enhanced. I lost my breath. I was crying. I, I mean, it was such a beautiful experience. And what happened was I went back. This was in November of 2019. I went home. And a couple months later, COVID came. The world shut down. And I continued to do the meditations and the work that I had been doing with my guides and Grandmother Ayahuasca at home. Every morning, I would sit in meditation, and these beings would come, these angelic beings. Grandmother Aya was there, and I kept doing more of the work I was doing when I was in Costa Rica. And as a result of that, I started elevating my frequency and elevating my frequency. So angelic beings, um, deceased loved ones, depending on what their vibration is and, and their energetic body is, they live in different dimensions. We live in the three, 3D, in the third dimension. They live in other frequencies live in other dimensions. They vibrate in a different frequency. So I was able to elevate my frequency and these angelic beings who were in a higher frequency, a higher dimension, they met me. We sort of like met and right. I started, I started like getting guidance and I started hearing them and I started being able to like understand them. And I did work with them for many, many, many months and it wasn't easy. And it took practice just like going to the gym or studying a language. Like it took practice and ultimately I got to the point where I am able to channel. They talk through me, but mostly I, they do like what Esther Hicks does. They, I do yeah. that with them. Okay. And then I am able to just automatic write in the messages. They kind of, my consciousness kind of shifts over a little bit, creates space for them and they download into me and this messages just come out fast and furiously and they're absolutely beautiful and they're messages of love and support for my community and whomever I come into contact with who I feel I'm um, receiving guidance needs that from me, from mm -hmm. them. And um, 
like I said, I never knew I was going to do that. You know, that was not on my like, we're not going to do it when I get older. <laughs> yeah, if someone told you you're going to have to uh, s sit aside and let something talk through you, in the beginning you might have been like, what? No, I'm okay. No, I'm okay. <laughs> no, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> and that gradual um, introduction to it. Well, one, mm -hmm. that trip that you had, the ayahuasca trip, um, that experience that you had was after that where you had the teeth, the teeth, <laughs> the teeth yeah. chattering moments, right. and yet they're like, you've been activated. Like they flip yeah. the switch, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, exactly. That's cool. Uh, mm -hmm. When you started to do that inner work um, with the different um, guides and mm -hmm. grandmother ayahuasca mm -hmm. after that trip, right? Those couple months. How did they appear to you? I'm pretty like it was it just a voice? Did you see something? Did you hear like what what type of experience was that? I'm very curious. Yeah, it's a really good question because I tend to get focused on, you know, one 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 avenue of the story. But um I used to laugh. I mean, it was not an easy time in my life because like I said before, I didn't have a lot of, of support. And um because I needed to be here in 2023, 2022, doing this stuff, I was on a fast track. So I was, I was, I, I used, I was having experiences with, you know, we're part of an omnipotent universe. There's many, 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 many other life forms out there. We're just one of them. And if so, if you don't think that we are, then you've got a lot of learning to do because how could we possibly be the only beings it's just in one this, planet this, and then I know, an we're infinite just, celestial body. We're just body. all around, you know, we got it under <laughs> control, right? <laughs> exactly. Mm -hmm. And um, I started having experiences with all kinds of beings. So some of those beings will come to me at night um, by my bed side. That's, that sounds scary. It like... was. It was. It was. But I had to have faith. Like I had to have support. Um with, you know, I had one friend that I could talk about, you know, they only want to talk to you, but they, they're going through all their own stuff too. And, um, I would have, like, I woke up and there were two light beings standing by my bed. Like sometimes they would work on me at night too. There were like energy paths coming from them to me. Um, when I was in channel in the morning, I would see them. I would have my eyes closed. So I would hear them. I would actually feel their vibration, they would kind of not take shape in me, but I would actually feel them. So some of them were small, some of them were big, some of them were vast, like a frequency, like there's this, it's like a Mother Mary sort of a mother energy that comes, oh my goodness, she's so lovely. She is effervescent. And when she comes, she lights up my face and she smiles and she is so filled with love and mother, mother energy. And when I'm having a hard time, and there have been very hard times um, in my life, you know, just having trust and faith and understanding what's next, um, she'll come. She'll come like a mother, and she'll she'll just kind of um, make me feel held and make me feel safe and talk to me. And she's amazing. Um, there's other beings that are my guides. There's one on my right all the time. His name is Avril. He's Palladium. And um, I, it's it's so interesting, right? I could just sit here and say that, but it's true. Um, and so I was I used to joke with my friend and say I was like a galactic hotel, like all these different beings would come, and they would they were very reverent and they were kind. They come in love. I'm very 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 protective. Um, but at the time, I didn't know what was going on. I had to experience them to have understanding. You have to have contrast to mm -hmm. have understanding. It's the only way our universe works. It's the way everything so one, works. One question mm -hmm. that comes to mind when I is, is and a few people talk about this, the, I guess the, how, how would I introduce this? The negative entities. Have you mm -hmm. seen any negative entities and how do you, I'm sure let's say there's people that are having experiences and they're not really sure how to decipher. How do you know? when some yeah. a, a being is has, is is positive or negative right and pretending to be positive and stuff like that would you be able yeah. to elaborate on that from your experiences yeah. yeah you definitely feel it 
So they can't be anything that they're not because they're existing in a frequency. So if their frequency is low, you feel it. Their frequency is high, you feel it. I often say, some of this is too high level for people who are just starting to understand it, but I often say for people to be able to relate when you walk in a room and um, you're like, oh, damn, that dude Jeff's here again. I hate his vibe. I hate him. That dude just, he, made, he brings me down. I don't, there's something about him. People will say there's something about her. I don't like it. That's your, your energy and your empathic body and your picking up on their energy, on their frequency. Um, you know, when you go to a horror film, they're scaring you. That frequency mm -hmm. is low. Why someone would want to do that? I don't know. But <laughs> um, yeah. when you go to a symphony and you hear the violins, those string instruments, they're so high. Their vibration is so high. Often you cry. I cry when I hear the violins. They permeate me. Mm -hmm. um, when you have, and I have had experiences with low vibratory beings, it's part of the, it was like a university. It's part of that understanding energy university. I've had them. I was so open in the beginning when I was telling you I had those beings by my bed. They would come in and, and then leave. So I would actually feel them and it's scary as heck. But they aren't, they're not able to, they weren't able to stay within me because my frequency was high. So I wasn't a match for them. Does that make sense? Does that make yeah. sense? So when you're totally. on, yeah, when you're on a radio station, right? Abraham talks about this. Esther talks about this. You can't be on this frequency if you can't be on this station if you're on this frequency. They don't match. So they tried to get into my body. They would stay, but they can't. They just can't. If you, not you, but someone listening, if you're addicted to alcohol, if you are listening to low vibration music, if you are low frequency, you're, you're an open book for them. Like they can come in and my guides, it's the biggest, 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 biggest lesson they want everyone to learn is how to raise their frequency. And we could talk about that later, but, um, you're honoring yourself to, to do that because you have attachments. I can get attachments, you know, things that want to be near me. People have, um, when you, when you drink alcohol, when you're doing, when you're smoking weed, when you're doing things like that, you are opening a door basically because that changes your vibration mm -hmm. for those sorts of things to come in. We talked about that. And, um, a lot of people, they don't understand that. They don't understand that. They don't understand that the music and ma the mass media and music that's pumped out is in a certain Hertz, which is in a certain frequency, which is permeating your being 24 seven. You keep that music on, you're doing yourself a disservice. The news, it's a certain frequency. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's there for a reason to, to put fear, to, to keep people from opening up their consciousness and mm. understanding their spiritual abilities. But so, yeah, um, I've had experiences with all of yeah, those I see things. That. <laughs> I have, I have, I, I have, I, I have. <laughs> I, I can, so that reminds me, and it's almost like those movies that uh, I think it's paranormal activity where it shows a being that chose somebody and they just mess with them. And that person feels alone and only the, they see the bad things that are happening. And so they, they start to seclude themselves further and further and further or mm -hmm. a traumatic event happens and they become exposed. They start questioning things, but because they're not working on self-improvement or just uneducated on levels of consciousness for your frequency and whatnot they are an open book like you said and so it's interesting how you went through a traumatic event and it was like boom 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 and and you were able to still find a way out of that where you went a more positive route because there could be a lot of people that went the negative route mm -hmm. and you know you went to like this monster university so to speak i'm thinking <laughs> of monsters inc, monsters right? inc. i love it I right, you it. see all these different shapes and stuff. You're like, I don't know Sully. because you look bad, but you are you good? And then it's it's it sounded like a lot of the lesson was the listening to, to the feeling, the vibe of yes. of the pull or the push, right? The frequencies mm -hmm. and whatnot. Um, I guess what I'm getting to is if we're gonna talk about how important it is for you to be above a certain frequency, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm pulling from, I'm not sure if you're familiar with um, 
David Hawkins mm -hmm. with power versus force and uh, levels of frequency. And if you start to drop below 200 and 100, you start to, you know, become uh, susceptible to those negative frequencies yes. and beings. And then as you move up, right? So what are some of the, uh, you hinted at it, what are, maybe you can give us one, two, or even three, depending on how much time we have, um, ways to level up your frequency. Ooh, that's so good. That's so good. That's so good. So, so the beings that I channel now are called the Great Council of Light. And I mentioned this before, one of the things that they really want you to do is is work on your frequency because like COVID, there's a fear frequency coming again and you need to rise above it. You need to rise above it so that you're not just whoo, taking like a wave at the beach, taken down. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> and um, so some of the things that you can do is some of the really simple things that you can do. Look around at what you're doing every single day. What are you doing? What are you spending your time consuming? Who are you spending your time with? What kind of conversations are you having? Right? What kind of mm -hmm. experiences are you partaking in? Is that shit? Get rid of it. Start cleaning that up. Start cleaning it. Seriously. You want to sit around and talk about people and have idle gossip and you want to watch nonsense on the news and like just dive into fighting, fighting, fighting. Stop fighting, they say. Stop fighting. Because that's changing your frequency. It's getting you into a place where you, you're not conscious of what you're doing. You're in the spiral of nonsense. Get rid of the nonsense. You can eat better. So choose higher vibrational foods. Foods that come from the earth. They're higher, they're higher frequency. Fast foods, they're processed. They're a lower frequency. Mm. Beautiful rainbow foods from the earth are a higher frequency. Alcohol, obviously, it's hard, but... Definitely one of the things, drugs, alcohol. Um, you can do, go out in nature, go for a walk, unplug, yeah. take your headset out, don't talk on the phone, go for a walk, look around, you know? You're breaking, you're, you're kind of like resetting what you're doing. That's one of the things. There's something beautiful about, um, every month we have a curated sound healing just for my community. We actually make it just for the community. It's at a certain frequency. You can go online, you can go on YouTube, you can go on Spotify, listen to a meditation or a sound healing. You can actually like change your vibration. You know, there, there are little things like that. Um, sit with yourself five minutes a day, close off all of the stuff that, that's bothering you and taking your attention away and go within and try to connect with your inner compass. Try to connect with your higher self. Try to ask for guidance from it. Try to ask for guidance from your deceased loved ones who are all, oh, there's an army around you, always ready to help. There is. So that might be a lot, but maybe, um, you know, you can start with some of those easier ones. And um, really, you can change things very, very, very quickly. You can. Yeah, especially with being, so I hear a lot of self-awareness of your relationships and then the awareness mm -hmm. of your habits your day-to-day -day habits right how are they affecting you what if you were to guess what level of vibration or you know is this serving me at, on a, is it pulling me upwards or is it pu pulling me That's down it. right it's a gauge mm -hmm. just the yeah. gauge i guess yeah. what the last thing would be how would you gauge your level of frequency like how do you know that you are moving up a notch, so to speak, mm -hmm. right? Versus mm -hmm. dropping down. I know there's mm -hmm. like some some obvious ones, but I'm just curious, how do you find out? Like, how do you gauge yourself? Okay. Um, a really good thing to do is to, I, you can change it. Like I can, I can gauge it by how I'm feeling. So everybody can gauge it by how they're feeling. How have you, like, uh, let's see. Yesterday I was so happy, I had a great day. I met friends. It was awesome. We laughed. We did. I did something I've never done before. It was scary, but I stepped up to do it, and it was fun. A couple of days ago, I was really low, and I was dealing with stuff that I needed to heal that was coming up to heal. You know, and if you're not really at that place where you're working and talking about healing, you know how you're feeling from day to day, right? But one of the things that I tell people is, you have a choice. 
You have many, many choices every single day. You have, it's an endless amount of choices that you get to make. How are you showing up for your choices? Are you making your choices with fear? Are you making them with love? So if there's a choice and you're afraid and you don't want to make it and you shy away and you, you, you do it because of fear, start looking at your choices because when you start making more loving choices, your life starts to get better. That's how you can tell. Your life starts to change. Your life starts to get better. And so I challenge someone to try it for a day, try it for a week, try it for a month. See, make a little note. Look at the experiences that change. Look at the people who walk out of your life. Look at the new people that come into your life. Look at how you're feeling, right? Yeah. What have you done? You know, it's basically it. It's it's how how is your life? Is it is it? Are you happy with your life? Are you not happy with your life? And it sounds so simple, right? And, and yeah. Uh, maybe and for myself because I've been just more cognizant of my day to day. I need to. And I know, like, be more aware that not everybody is like that, right? We have our lenses that we see our, the world through, and um, maybe it's obvious for some and not for others. Yes. So something as simple as just gauge how you're feeling. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe someone has a different lens on what that means, right? And we're still projecting our thoughts on onto other people and maybe playing the blame game, blame game yes. versus how much of this is me and really paying paying attention and like those small switches um based on what you said i I can see just major changes for someone who hasn't really thought about that Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay cool well yeah we covered a lot of very interesting stuff is there anything Mm -hmm. that you wanted to mention that we might have glossed over when you were sharing your story or experiences that you wanted to um talk about before we finish up there's one thing Okay. Is that I, I didn't understand who I was. I didn't understand I was an empath. I didn't understand that I was special, actually. We're all special. But as a kid, I thought I was weird. I was into art. I was into music. I was actually told I was weird by someone's parent, you know. And um, <laughs> I, 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 I was. She was like, you're just weird. weird, Pam. And I'm like, thanks, <laughs> you know. Hi, thanks, or whatever. But I never really felt like I fit in. I fit in. I fit in. Then I started understanding who I am. And so I'm an empath. We are all sentient beings. We are all sentient beings. So I have a free download, the 10 top signs to find out if you're an empath. Cool. Yeah. So you can sign up for my and get that. And it, if you don't know what that means, you can find out if you are one. That explains a lot because it makes you understand that you're really sympathetic to other people's energies. You're really like to the things that are happening out in the world, to the things that are happening in front of you, to food, to alcohol, to sound, to all the things. So it might help you understand. And if there's a little spark inside of you that slightly wants to know something, that's where I think you should start, (laughs) right? It's a good place to start because then you have some guidance to understanding yourself. Oh, yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Um I like how you have that set up. So we'll, uh, I'll work on getting that info for you and I'll put that in the show notes so someone can kind of click on it and go straight there. That's pretty cool. Thank you. I'm, I'm pretty sure there's a lot of people that are like, yeah. am I? I think I am. But, I know. You know, you, you always want to know like what what part of these these surveys, the surveys are usually pretty fun. You're like, oh, cool. All right. You know, it's, <laughs> a lot of it is like, I'm not alone or it's some of the questions you're like, oh, okay, I thought that I was the only person that- yes was thinking this way when everybody around you, especially when you're your child and um, the, I guess the percentage of the world community is so small. You, th- your perspective of the world is that small neighborhood of kids. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we all go through ah, as you yes. get higher and, and more involved with your community. You're like, okay, there's more weird people. Awesome. Right. And so like <laughs> right. stuff like this kind of helps expose us to each other and connect with each other. So I, I like what you're doing. And I think that's a good Thank segue you. into what you're working on right now, yeah. which is or what you have going on right now. Um, you have your online global community. Yes. Um, you want to share something about what that is for anybody that is new to understanding what, what you're working on? Yeah, sure. It's a perfect place for someone who has that little spark 
and wants to learn more about spirituality, wants to learn more about consciousness, wants to learn more about energy, wants to learn more about meditation, sound healings, ayahuasca, all the things that are your spiritual awakening journey. I didn't have anyone. I created, I got a download in 2020 to create a place for humankind. They're going through their spiritual awakening. They need a place to land. So I created Spirit Calling. They told me what to name it. And so it's a, it's a beautiful place. It's got education and community support, um, events, and it's like a spiritual Facebook. So no matter where you are on your journey. Spirit face. No, I'm it's spirit <laughs> Facebook. It's face spirit. <laughs> but, um, you know, you go in and you get, you automatically are, are shown, we have a resource section with all the books, all the videos that I experienced on my, on my journey. And I tell you exactly what to watch to begin with. So you understand some of the things you've been experiencing that kind of pulls them together. Mm. And then, um, you know, if you experience something, you post it in the community. We have healers and practitioners that are there to serve you and to answer questions and support you. And it's a beautiful, beautiful place. We had a love, a virtual love circle on Wednesday on Valentine's day where we all talked about, like we met, we have a live meeting room. It's almost like zoom, um, where we can meet and gather have coffee and talk. And, um, you know, some people have a hard time on Valentine's day, other people, um, are having a hard time that week and they were able to share and talk about loving themselves. And you know, what's, what do you feel is, you know, you, what's great about you? Like, what's the one thing that you would say that to honor yourself? And we were promoting self-love. It was really cool. It was awesome. Um, it's cool. Yeah. So we have a seven day free trial, you know, no, no commitment whatsoever. You can go in and have access to every single thing there. So I'd love for anyone who's, who's feeling a call to honor it, honor it. You know, what do you have to lose is what I say. Nothing. You have everything to gain. Awesome. Sounds like a really cool place to check out. Yeah. Um, so for anybody that's wondering how you connect with Pamela, all the information will be in the show notes, making it a lot easier for you to connect um, and we'll have that link that you, uh, for the, um, the survey that you mentioned. And, um, yeah, is there anything else that I didn't ask you about that you're working on or that you're, you know, maybe a sneak peek uh, as we close out? Yeah, we'll be launching our new podcast, Live the Call. That's right. Where we inter yeah, we interview people who have, they've heard the call, they've listened to it, they put action behind it, and now they're living it. So it's here, listen, and live. So they're, they're inspirational. They're cool. We're going to be interviewing Ken Honda. He has that book, Happy Money. Okay. Um, I'm going to be talking to him in a couple of weeks. I'm so excited. So yeah, check that out. And you can find that on our website too. There'll be a link. Awesome. Yeah, awesome thank stuff. you. I'm excited for a lot of the, the things you have going on, especially the podcast. You're you're joining the uh, podcasting community. Oh, I'm a podcaster, man. <laughs> right. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the community. Um, that's cool. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Pamela, thank you for coming on the show. It's been thank a pleasure you. having you. Thank you. It was amazing being here. 